Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you for being with me again today. As you probably know, uh, three um, leaders, I mean, actually four leaders, uh, but there's three that uh, they feel important, are visiting Ukraine at this time. And those are, I call them, the four uh, horsemen of the apocalypse. And the three of them that are the important ones, supposedly, are uh, the leader of uh, France, Emmanuel Macron, the leader, uh, Prime Minister of um, Italy, Mario Draghi, and the German Chancellor Olaf Scholz. And uh, the, the last one, I don't know why he's over there, is the Romanian President Klaus Johannes. They stated uh, the, the, the reason for the visit, for us, the, the little worms, you know, um, that we were told is that they, they came over there to show solidarity. I don't believe that a bit. Yeah, it could be perceived as that. But you don't uh, go to a torn, uh, uh, no, war-torn area to show solidarity. I mean, you already, I mean, your uh, minions already did that. And through your statements and your money and support, whatever support it is, it's already proven that you are there. I, I think that they came over there to speak face-to-face, mano-a-mano, with Zelensky and um, try to uh, uh, convey certain ideas and probably tell him, hey, you probably need to go and uh, talk with uh, Putin or do something about it. It's we're waning away or something like that. I said that three uh, big guys, but they're not as big because I don't think they have any, any, any uh, decision making power. That is the points of uh, the centers of power in this uh, situation are uh, located in London and uh, Washington DC, not in Paris, Rome, or uh, whatever, Berlin. So no, those three that are over there, they are influential, but they are not decision uh, makers. Those are in London, I would say primarily, secondary in Washington. And obviously uh, in Moscow, but I'm not talking about Moscow as being obviously on this guy's side. They said, no, 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 we're not here to uh, pressure um, Zelensky to do anything, uh, to um, have to give any concessions to the Russians in any possible, um, in a future peace talks with Russia. We're not here to pressure. Well, I think it's, I mean, again, euphemisms. I think they are over there to, as I say, convey the idea of being nice, not to say, hey, pff, you know, times are rough uh, in uh, our economies and our little uh, fish over there that we have to make vote for us. Uh, uh, you know, it's, it's not looking too good. And why? Because uh, winter is coming and we're going to need uh, their resources. And we are so proud that we say we don't need them. <laughs> guys, I hope we, uh, you guys uh, can finish it up by uh, September so we can uh, again do business as usual. But they said no. I posted a video yesterday and uh, regarding the three saying that we're not going to pressure or uh, suggest Zelensky should make any territorial concessions to the Russians. That's uh, their job to do it, whatever the president of uh, Ukraine, the parliament of Ukraine and the um, Ukrainian people. But we have here a uh, an article that really brings it closer to what I said that the reason is for all these uh, three plus one uh, are in Ukraine right now. So this article comes from the New York, New York Times. <laughs> yeah, kind of. New Voice of Ukraine from today, June 17th, 2022. Scholz, Macron and Draghi likely asked Zelensky to resume negotiations with Putin. <laughs> Well, Zelensky uh, is not going to do anything until he receives uh, uh, some phone calls from London. So French President Emmanuel Macron, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz and Italian Prime Minister Mario Draghi likely asked President Volodymyr Zelensky, and I'm uh, quoting, behind closed doors. That's the reason why they went over there, to avoid, you know, uh, when you communicate 
there are other people hooked on your uh, means of communication. I'm talking about when you're in Paris or when you're in uh, Berlin or when you're in Rome. So that's therefore you wait face to face and you limit the ears that would hear what's talked over there. That's what I said in the other two uh, videos I posted regarding the issue. And I still maintain that's what happens. And that's the reason behind closed doors to negotiate. So likely, so all these three likely asked Zelensky behind closed doors to negotiate with Russian dictator. He's not a dictator, but whatever, you know, this comes from uh, Ukraine. Why is, I'm not saying is a, is a, why, why am I saying he's not a dictator? In, because he's not functioning as a dictatorship. There are still other uh, individuals who make decisions. There are advisors, everything functions outside of this guy's jurisdiction. But nevertheless, they like, they like to show it and to appear like that. He didn't, you know, he didn't impose a martial law like Zelensky did. He didn't uh, dissolve the parliament, the Duma. He didn't do many things that a dictator would. Uh, he has um, presidential powers like any other president. He was democratically elected. What are you talking about? You don't like the guys? The guy? Okay, tell me why. But just to throw like that, because why? Because you don't like the guy? Not that there's a way, but this way shows me who uh, you really are, actually. But it's, it's okay. I understand this frustration. If my country would be invaded, right? I would call the other person, you know, I would be tempted to call the other person who attack me in a certain way, right? A criminal, a barbarian, or whatever. So it says here that um, they uh, likely asked him behind closed doors to negotiate with Putin, and the German newspaper Die Welt reported on June 16th. The publication said that the economic damage that the US countries are suffering because of the war is becoming greater and more difficult to handle. No, really, and it's gonna be even worse because of the winter approaching. Besides that you shot yourself in the foot, which you already recognize that. I posted another video already regarding that, and <laughs> it was the Americans recognizing that, hey guys, maybe we impose the sanctions on us. I was talking about this since the beginning of the war, and they were talking about sanctions. Guys, you're gonna hit yourself harder than you hit Russia, true. And I'm quoting, economic growth has slowed sharply and inflation <clears throat> has reached a record level, says the article. The publication said that is the reason, the publication says that is the reason why the heads of the state and government might have urged, urged Zelensky behind closed door to sit down and negotiate at the negotiating table with Putin. It's obvious. I was, I've been saying for about a week and a half, uh, actually last, before last Friday, that something changed in the West in a way that the support seems, seems to wane. And uh, uh, that there were some signs from uh, the mass media, Western mass media, that uh, the hyster hysteria level dropped a little bit. Then we have some politicians making some claims like Macron, hey guys, you, at one point you got to negotiate with Russia, and you have the spat between Biden and Zelensky regarding uh, the Biden allegedly uh, informing uh, Zelensky before the invasion, based on US intelligence that are very trustworthy, that you, uh, Russians will uh, do this, will do that, and supposedly Zelensky did not want to hear it. So that's not another thing. And there are some other countries saying, hey, maybe you should talk to uh, Putin. Hey, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe. Maybe the sanctions are too rough, things that about two weeks ago you wouldn't hear. Everything was rosy, we're winning here, everything is great, Putin is destroyed, uh, Russia is going down, yeah, the sanctions are working, all that. The sanctions do not work because the Russians are making more, getting more revenue than before the war. Their profits are skyrocketing like many other uh, energy uh, companies, I mean, energy providing companies, except, you know, uh, Countries overall, they have high inflation and the economies are shrinking and it's going to go supposedly to a stagflation, which is bad. So nevertheless, that's exactly what I think, why these guys went over there to talk outside of other people's ears, tell, hey guy, we give you about one month or two and then we're done, definitely, but <clears throat> do something. And he's gonna call his buddies in London and they'll, they'll say, no, 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 you keep going, we have to, 
get Russia deeper into this and this, 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 it's okay, right? Why? Because it's not their sons dying over there, it's uh, other nations' sons killed in uh, Ukraine. Destruction and all that refugees and some people are counting money and looking at the opinion polls while those guys are dying there. Yes, believe me. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth and be just.